Thank you so very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your strong opening statement. Uh, thank you for holding today's hearing. Because last year, President Biden inherited an energy-dominant America. He spent the last 13 months squandering it. Since day one, the president has sought to end American oil, natural gas, and coal production. And that's the source of nearly 80 percent of our energy. He's banned new federal leases on oil for oil and gas. He's ground to a halt the permitting of natural gas pipelines and storage facilities. And he's made it much more difficult for energy producers to obtain financing. The results have been predictable. Sky high energy prices. The highest inflation in 40 years. New numbers out today. Highest in 40 years. And of course, he has emboldened our adversaries. The price of a barrel of crude oil recently reached $129. The last time oil prices broke 100 was in, was in 2014. And at the time, Joe Biden was Vice President of the United States. The geopolitical importance of U.S. energy dominance cannot be overstated. 2018, the United States was able to sanction Iranian oil over the country's ties to terrorism. Since we were energy dominant, those sanctions didn't increase the price for Americans at the pump. Now, the president wants to cut a deal with Iran. Boy, how times have changed. We shouldn't be bankrolling Iran's war machine just as we shouldn't have been banking Russia's war machine. You know, we've all heard about the atrocities that Putin's troops are committing. Where do you think this barbarism has been paid for? It's been paid for by Russian energy. Energy is the single largest source of revenue to the Russian state. 2021, Russia was our third largest foreign supplier of oil after Canada and Mexico. And as Senator Murkowski has said in this hearing, that a point that Russia was providing more oil to the United States than was Alaska. Last year, we imported nearly 700,000 barrels of Russian oil each and every day. Russia is also among the largest suppliers of uranium to the United States, as the chairman has mentioned in his opening remark. Make no mistake, the money spent on Russian energy helps support Russia's invasion of Ukraine. A State Department official in the Foreign Relations Committee even said that the sales of Russian energy was the cash cow that has paid for Putin's war machine. Before the invasion, President Biden was begging OPEC and Russia to produce more oil to sell to the United States. He has now followed Congress's lead and banned imports of Russian oil, natural gas, and coal. He should also ban Russian imports of, ur of uranium. Despite skyrocketing prices, the president is still hostile to American energy production. He wants to turn to Venezuela. He wants to turn to Iran. This is his pattern. The president was willing to lead Russia and to let Russia build pipelines like Nord Stream 2. But no, he won't let Americans build pipelines, not Keystone and not pipelines today for gathering lines and to allow us to produce and use American energy. The contrast is astonishing. Russia's invasion of Ukraine shows just how short-sighted the president's energy policy has been. Yet the president said not a single word about increasing American energy production in his State of the Union speech. He said, make, make this in America, make that in America, make the next thing in America, but not American energy, not a single word. The idea that America should be producing more energy doesn't appear to have crossed this president's mind. Rising energy costs are punishing American families, especially those on low and fixed incomes. President Biden wants us to believe that his policies are not to blame. And his solution continues to be to stop using fossil fuels. He wants to force Americans to drive expensive electric cars and insulate their homes. This is a fantasy, a fantasy in his mind and in that of some of the members of his administration. The reality is this world still largely runs on oil, natural gas, and coal. And that is not going to change in the foreseeable future, no matter how the work goes to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Killing American, killing American oil, natural gas, and coal production isn't going to change that. It will just enrich our adversaries and leave America weaker and more insecure. The president announced that he's releasing another couple days worth of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Others want a gasoline tax holiday. 
We don't need gimmicks. We need more American energy. No other major energy producing country shuts off its own reserves to production. Not Russia, not Iran, not China, not Saudi Arabia. Why should we? But Mr. Chairman, I'm glad you called attention to this talking line of the administration about the 900 leases. 9,000. Oh, I'm sorry, 9,000 leases. As you know, the leasing is just the first area where you get permission from the government, and you pay for the lease. But then you have to apply for permission to drill. It's like you paid the rent for the apartment, but the government won't give you the key to get in the door because they haven't given you the permission yet to drill. And then, of course, once you are able to produce energy from there, they won't allow the production, they won't give you the permission to, drill, to, uh, produce, to put together the pipeline to move the oil or the, the, the natural gas specifically from where it's coming out of the ground. Look, America is a world's energy superpower. It's time, once again, we started to act like it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this important hearing.